Oh. Alright then, let's kick this thing off. Hello and welcome to App Spy Plays Star Horizon. Every Friday we stream a newish game that's arrived on the App Store that we think is worthy of your attention. Today that game is Star Horizon, which is a game that takes a few notes from, I would say, things like Star Fox, the arcade shooters of the past, with the good looks of something maybe like Galaxy on Fire. So if you're interested in either of those things, then stick around, because you've got plenty of fun going on for you in the next hour or so. My name's James Gilmore. Above me is Peter Wellington. Oh, hi. I'm the editor of App Spy, and he contributes and stuff like that. And uh, together we will be guiding you through this here space shooter. Now, I haven't played much of this. I fired it up very, very briefly just to see if it would work on the Twitch stream. Because some things get a bit iffy when you try and stream them. Mm. Stream them. But it worked a treat. So I just left it there. And we get a bit of underlying plot stuff now telling us and introducing us to the game's characters. Hello, so, I'm going to pick it up, which I actually have to do. Usually I leave the iPad on the table for these things, but Be here it is. This time. Mm. I'm leaving the airlock and taking control of my vessel. Now, as you can see, uh, I am using the right-hand side of the screen to control it. So I'm putting my thumb on the screen and just moving around, and that's controlling the direction of the craft. Later on, when the weaponry appears, I will be doing that with my left thumb, from what I understand. At the moment, I've got my little AI helper, who is called Ellie, I think. And uh, she's giving me a bunch of advice on how to fly a ship and stay alive and uh, not die horribly. That's good of her. I know, it's good. So here, here's, here's our little tutorial. It's telling me to do move left and right, which I can already do. Okay, so while you're tutorializing, while the game is teaching you, I will say... Uh, Hello, chat room. Uh, I'm looking at you at the moment, and I'm seeing all of the people wander in and say hello. Hey. So, big hello to everybody there. And if you've got any questions about the game or you've got any comments, that sort of thing, then do give them to me, and uh, I'll relay them through to James. Oh, I'm doing barrel rolls. Yeah. It's, it's like it's uh, 1994 all over again. Right, Do you remember asked... 1994? It was good. <laughs> Dimly. I've been asked to neutralize basic targets. So uh, a single button has appeared on the left-hand side of the screen. That's just my starter cannon sort of thing, just a machine gun. And I'm moving around and uh, blasting away these little mines. Now I'm going to do the same thing only with rockets. So, cool. oh, three in one go. This is badass. I'm already impressed with the visuals. Very impressed. It looks really, really good. Like... Got... Yeah, really good. I've got my last weapon, which is a plasma cannon. And I'll just use that to blast away two markers. So three different types of weapon to choose from. The plasma cannons, they take plasma missiles rather. They take a little while to recharge. So I have to keep my eye on that. Wait for it to charge up before I can use it again. Apparently, uh, I get audio updates as well that tell me what I need to do. All oh, right, yeah, I need to make decisions. It says so. It's got a slightly Mass Effect decision making thing in it. I can open the report or not open the report. I'm going to open it. Yeah. And it'll give me a status report. If I choose not to do these things over the course of the game, that will have consequences further down the line. So if I disobey orders, you know, my good things might happen in the short term, but possibly bad things in the long term. Mm. Right, I've got some wingmen covering me either side, and it's on. The fight is on. Shooting stuff in the distance and ooh, kind of succeeding. So yeah, like you said, this looks brilliant. Like visually speaking, in the same way that Galaxy on Fire looks sort of phenomenal, this is very similar in that regard. It's a real showcase app for so, your so iPad. Just so that everyone's clear, what device are you run this on? Obviously, it's on an iPad, but is it a powerful? That's iPad? right. I'm on an iPad 4, you know, okay. which, is, which was just called the iPad when it was mm. released. Uh, so it's one below the iPad Air, the most recent one. So we're just a generation old. So it's one of the you know faster ones around. So it, it might run a bit slower on one of your lower end devices. If you're running it on an iPhone 4S, it might stutter a bit more, you know. But uh, no, it's running very, very smoothly on this. And considering it's also streaming, uh, it's doing pretty well. Sometimes it can stutter a little bit when you use the capture devices. But no, it's it's looking pretty sweet. However, no, there is so, yeah. there is a noted difference between this game and a game like Galaxy on Fire. The main one being this is essentially more Star Fox in terms of its gameplay, i.e. it's almost a gallery shooter. All the way the camera's moving around, I don't control that. I'm moving the craft like this. I can, you know, adjust my direction. Ooh, hello. Slipping through a gap there. I can adjust my direction within the confines of the screen 
but I can't choose where to go. I'm kind of being driven along in a very rigid on the rails sort of way. So Do you do you enjoy that kind of a game? Do you enjoy being Yeah, kind of... there's there's nothing wrong with taking a set path, right? And people go mad over open world stuff, right? Mm. Which is completely understandable. Everyone got obsessed with open world games because, you know, suddenly there was this huge freedom, you can go wherever you like, and uh, that seems very enticing. However, when you go into open world situations, you can lose control of things like pacing. You can find yourself drifting aimlessly around, doing not much of anything. Yeah. And that can suddenly become a little bit boring. So if it's done well, it's great, but it can kind of be a mixed blessing. So for me, there's nothing wrong with a linear narrative that forces you down a corridor, provided that corridor is an interesting place to be. Mm. Which sometimes it isn't, and it's dull, and there you have your own problems. And, and I suppose if you are being funneled down one corridor, there is always going to be something that you can be shown that's exciting. Whereas, you know, some of the really cool emergent stuff that happens in something like a, I don't know, like a Skyrim, for example, that's yeah. really exciting, really fun when, when that stuff kind of happens. But it's, it's few and far between in comparison to the kind of game like this, where it's on rails and it's like, look at this amazing explosion! <laughs> look at this amazing thing as well! Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can argue that this and I've seen the review because one of our reviewers um, put it up for App Spy and he liked it very much but obviously it can potentially lead to things getting a bit repetitive if you're mm. just doing the same thing every time but at the moment I'm just starting out and this is this is fun the movement controls are pretty responsive I'm not having to move crikey I'm dying now I'm not having to move uh, my thumb very far in order to get a decent amount of movement out of the ship. So I'm not dragging it halfway across the screen or anything. I'm just very slightly moving my thumb and uh, it's dipping and ducking and diving. And that's great. So it means it's very easy to control, especially on the iPad. On the iPhone, often you'll control things a little bit more sensitively because of the size of the screen. On the iPad, you might feel you have to track your thumb further around and that can become quite awkward. But no, it's, it's very good, it controls nicely. Do I stick to my orders or help my friends? I'm gonna help my friends because yeah. you stick it to the man. I've chosen to save my friends. I'll never advance my career like this. So <laughs> says, that's what the, the game center's just told me. Denied. Oh, I'm now arguing with my AI. Damn it, Ellie, if they die, so do our chances of taking out those stupid capacitors. Now, now she's simulating. I don't really know what that means. She's doing what? She's uh, simulating something, God knows what. I'm not even going to ask. What an AI gets up to on her own time is her own business. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Who's to judge? Exactly. Um, so if you're just joining us in the chat, we are playing Star Horizon uh, on iPad. Is it iPhone as well? It is iPhone too, I think. Uh, um, okay. You can find out all the information on it actually uh, on App Spy as well, because we've got a review up for it if you want to check it out. Um, this is our first time with the game. I didn't review this one, so this is all new to me. Uh, mm -hmm. which is kind of how we like doing it. If I come in to these things knowing everything, it's a little bit dull. I think you get a more of a sense of what it's like to play the game yourself for the first time, which is kind of what we're trying to convey here. Absolutely. Uh, and it gives you an idea and we go, oh, I can't look at that, I might go and get it. Or, so, so, or. so basically, obviously, if you're, if you're in the chat room, uh, say hello. And obviously, if you've got any questions, then uh, fire away and I will relay them to James. Uh, we've got one from Tadias who says, is there a first person or cockpit view that can be used? Um, is I that, is that available? I don't believe so. Now, I think we are stuck within this uh, view. There's no other option. I mean, there is a pause menu, and I think I can... Let me just actually get that for a second. I can pop into the options here. Sounds, music, language, games. Left-hand steering. Nope, that's all there is. It is just that point of view alone. Which is fair enough, because I think it would be quite... It might be a bit more tricky to control from a first-person well, perspective. Uh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, one of the people in the chat room agrees with you. That's the developer. Uh, we've uh, got the developer of the game through in the chat room at the moment. Oh, hello there. Said, uh, it's not included because it would not work well on iPhone. Yeah, so, uh, okay. You should be a games developer, James. <laughs> so you, you know all of these things. Well, I just, I just from pausing it and talking to you guys, I just died. Oh, well. But not to worry. Infinite lives, I presume, so we can crack on and back mm -hmm. in business again. Nice explosions. It is fun. It's fun to look at, if <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah. else. I enjoy, I enjoy looking at games like this. It's pure kind of eye candy. Mm. 
So, are you more of a sci-fi fan or more of a sort of fantasy fan? I'm a sci-fi guy. If I'm going to mm. have to choose anything, then yeah, sci-fi is the way forward. I mean, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, which was the kind of my favourite game of the last generation. Not because it was perfect, but just because I loved the universe. So, I'm very into that. And obviously, I've made my way through um, Battlestar Galactica, you know, the new TV series and stuff. So, spaceships flying around and blowing up lasers and enemies and all that. That's, that's cracking. That's all good. Um, so, something like this is, you know right down my particular alley. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to master the whole dodging thing, because from what I read of uh, the review that one of our guys put up, you need to do a lot of the old barrel rolls mm -hmm. in order to stay alive. That really helps out in the dodging uh, thing. If you don't do the barrel rolls, then perhaps you might get hit a little bit more often. So there's a, a tactical point to them as well, besides looking cool, which is good to know. Oh, God. Keep trying to shoot those guys, and I realise they are actually my wingmen, so I shouldn't probably be trying to shoot them in the face. No, I mean that would be a sort of betray. I mean, you did so <laughs> well with the. Oh, I'm going to go help to my save friends. My friend. yeah. yeah these are the, these are the guys I'm saving, actually, trying to save. Um, in fact, that might be why I died. They might have lost the power. Oh, I've result done it this time. Good work, David. I really showed them, apparently. Yay me! I think my name's John something or other. I think they beeped my last name in the intro for some reason, so it's like a secret. Hmm. No idea why, but there you go. Wow, look at that. Massive ships. Results, completed level one. One stars. Pathetic, but uh, there you go. I'm trying to talk and play at the same time, but this isn't about the skills, yeah? You can make as many excuses as you like. So after the first... <laughs> and I will. After the first level, how are you feeling? Confident? Do you, do you believe that you can save the galaxy? Um, I was born to save the galaxy, quite clearly. Um, okay. Whether I'll be able to do so uh, in this particular run is another thing. Um, mm. So it's divided up into individual levels. It's not one continuous space battle, which is kind of good, especially for a mobile game. Look at the textures on this ship on the, on the bottom here. That's really nice. Good, good design there. Lots of lens flare as well, because this is now the uh, 2010s, and uh, there must be lens flare on no. everything. Lens flare is the old. Lens flare is like so last year. Now it's all about that that mucky lens filter that you get. Oh, really? What the thing that you get on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what mucky lens you're talking about. But what I'm talking about is the is you know when you you're in a car racing game and you kick up dirt and it oh, yeah. hits the screen and and it looks like dirt is shining. It, well, light is shining through the dirt. It's it's like that. It's like in. Uh, asphalt 8 is used like all of the time. Oh, right. Is that what it's all about now, is it? Yeah, it's what it's all about it's what now. Kids and, love. Yeah, and it was all about that <laughs> light refracting into different colours. Um, that thing from Kane and Lynch 2, that was a, that was a thing as well. Kane and years. Lynch 2? You played Kane and Lynch 2? I did, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> what? I did. And really? Yes, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. I like the, I like the sort of visual effects. I thought it was really good. I, I you, what about the four-hour campaign in God Awful Shaky Cam? I, I didn't much care for some of that stuff, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I like the I like the, ca the campaign. In, uh, oh my! I know, I know. You, you and Gertzman. Well, yeah, well, exactly. Head to head, you'll have to have a a, a lynch off. We'll have a punch up about it, and it'll uh, it'll all go. It'll all go. It'll all go to pot. Oh terrible. crikey! There's lots and lots and lots and lots of aliens now. This is bad. Okay, actually, I'm trying to defend the main ship here, so. They're launching loads of missiles at the uh, my little craft, the one I'm presumably supposed to be protecting. So I've got to try and keep the missiles away. Arr. Job done. AI targets neutralized. Result. I like the constant shifting of perspective. It's taking advantage of the fact that space has no up and has no down, hmm. uh, and the camera is constantly moving around the ship. And I'm going, you know, all all points of the compass, which is. Which is nice. You don't feel like stuck in a particular axis, even though you are, as I say, limited within your movement. You are stuck in a corridor, essentially. But the free floating camera is doing a good job of making me feel like I am. I have some sort of freedom of movement. So this, so obviously this is an on rails shooter. Yeah. It's very much inspired by a Star Fox, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, you can see did you ever play? Did you ever play any of the other on rail shooters like Panzer, uh, Panzer Dragoon or? I only played a bit of that because it was on the Saturn and I didn't have a Saturn when I was a kid. Who I did? Was a, I was a. You did. 
I, well, no, I was, I was saying who did. Who did? Oh, yeah, oh, good point. No that's, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't have that. I was a PlayStation kid, so um, I didn't get to play it much, but I did have a friend who did, and so had a, had a quick go. And like I say, there is there is definitely fun to be had. I mean, I played a bunch of Star Fox, and that was oh, yeah. a great deal of fun at the time. Um, it's kind of about, I don't know, like I say, even if you're stuck in a corridor, that can be okay, provided the corridor's full of interesting things. Mm. Uh, and... It's been fairly interesting so far, i got to say. I mean, you, I'm constantly occupied. There's always stuff to shoot. Oh, it's coming at me from lots of different angles. And the way that they, I say, the camera's manipulating the environment, the way I'm moving around different areas of the ship, it means that there's kind of a constantly changing background. Your backdrop is shifting all the time. You're not just staring at the blackness of space or something. And that's good. That keeps you kind of interested and involved. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Whoa. Hmm. And trying to stay alive. <laughs> Things are getting a bit hairier now. So we, we've we, we've got some hints coming in from the chat room. We've got the developer saying, which is uh, surprise underscore himself says, it only takes one shot to destroy missiles. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So I think that's probably. So I can I don't have to power the thing with my machine gun. I can yeah. just take a shot or two. That's just like. Good easy. to know. Mm -hmm. Short easy. controlled bursts, as uh, they say, in Alien. So do they? They say that in Aliens, yes. Not in Alien. Uh, do I do I need to watch that movie though? Well, we we got a comment about the fact that you haven't watched that movie. I know. I haven't watched it. I've watched like I watched the first twenty minutes of Alien and I got to the bit with the with the bit in the chest and then I just thought that. Oh damn it. We start the checkpoint. I the mothership got blown up, taken out. Fail me. But good in uh, sorry, not infinite, good automatic instant restarts though. Very, very pleased to see that. That's another big winner in the terms of a uh, uh, game, especially mobile gaming. Mm. Any game that has that instant restart thing, that's a big win as far as we're concerned. All those Moorish games, things like Trials, stuff like that. When you're playing and you just tap and you get an instant restart. Oh wow, restart checkpoint. What am I missing here? I'm getting, something's getting destroyed almost immediately. Mm. You're being attacked. Oh, mm. what, what, what should I Can be you at? Can, Okay, uh, let's run through the Pilot 101. Have you checked your six? <laughs> I can't check my six. Hang on, okay. I'm taking these two out, and there's uh, maybe this thing's my problem. Hmm. There we go. There was a, a large pylon jutting out of one of the crafts that was being shooting at my mothership. So I took it out. There we go. Got those two fighters. Nice. Nice. Now we're talking. Three of them here. To pay more attention to the energy ratings, because you can see on the heads up display that there are little energy ratings. That show you how much each particular object has been worn down, shows you their you know their shields and their energy. And some of these big ones take a lot more than the little craft, so you have to kind of keep your eye out. Mm. Make sure you're shooting at the right thing. I think you might need to try and destroy the big gun. That sounds like a good thing to do. I don't know which big gun that is, but there is a big gun apparently. Right, awesome. Well I Go for the big gun. Always go for the big gun. That's actually, that's advice. That's life uh, advice there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in any situation that applies, I think. Whoa. Okay. Nice. More guys here. This is... You know, I, know, I know that we've been looking at it for, you know, 20 minutes now, but this game really does look awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just struck me that... There's like laser fire everywhere and explosions and you're floating through space and you're doing all this stuff and like you're going from super far away from huge objects to right up close to them and they just look awesome. Mm. Well, I'm impressed by the frame rates. So, yeah. Like I say, we have situations where sometimes when we try and capture games for the stream and for the video reviews, we have to use a capture device and it can put the iPad under a lot of pressure, like it's trying to deal with outputting the video not only to the screen, the iPad screen, but also to this capture device. And it can freak out and you get frame rate dips and all that sort of stuff. Uh, here, it's handling it just fine, which is, you know, that's impressive, that's good. Let's keep... Oh god, look at this. Oh, it's an absolute cluster fudge. Yikes! Uh Ah, cluster fudge is the worst kind of fudge. Yeah, I know, that's right. It's, it's, it's ah, like, what kind of fudge? your teeth and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's in cluster fudge? Um, jelly beans. Ooh. What? Why would they be in there? Licorice all sorts. Ah, nightmare. Oh, Didn't just... quite make it. Did not quite make it. Uh, there's a huge, huge, like, a uh, bombardment of missiles just at the end there. 
Need to sort that out. Need to get that taken out. Let's try again. Uh, gotta actually concentrate a bit and everything. As if I was playing a a, a, a video a proper game. game. I know. An action it's, video game. Exactly. Let's forget that sometimes. You play a lot of stuff on iPad, especially. Because um, it iPad's very good for things like strategy games, stuff that you can sit down and uh, use point and click controls on and take your time really and they're quite good for narrating, whereas these action ones you end up like talking too much and forgetting what you're supposed to be doing and failing just like that. The mothership has been destroyed again. Power surge detected in the Yamato gun. Neutralize the, that gun, that is my priority. Yeah, so you, you, were, you were saying that this is the first sort of time that uh, you've, you've played this and yeah. Uh, so, is the, do you feel like there's much of a story? Do you feel like those Renegade Paragon options, obviously not the Parag <laughs> Renegade Paragon, but <laughs> but do you feel like they have added much so far? Well, or? I've only done encountered one or two of them, so like it's basically I haven't had any consequences from it yet, at least none that I'm aware of. So we'll have to wait until later in the story to see if it cuts me out of it of anything. I think you know primarily, to be honest, it's about the action, isn't it? There is a story there to kind of window dressing if you like to, mm. to cover it up I mean uh, I don't know I, it might turn into a an amazing story later on I'm not sure we're only at the beginning but clearly the action is the focus here mm. which is you know probably as it should be it's not pretending to be a, a an RPG space opera this is a an arcade shooter so I want mm. to be shooting things in an arcade fashion mm -hmm. and in that sense I'm you know I appear to be getting my money's worth so how uh, one thing I'm, uh, I'm kind of a little bit confused about is mm -hmm. there's no reticle on the screen yeah it's about basically guiding your craft towards the dot and it will highlight the nearest target so the, the heads up display highlights the available targets in a white circle and mm. then if I drift near them so if I hang over them then you can see it locks on and goes yellow just like that uh. so that's the way I, I get it if I launch one of these uh, triple burst missiles they kind of pick the, what appears to be like the three nearest targets so I can't, I can't look onto three people at once, but if I hit the missile, it will do just that. Um, if I want to save up, I'm obviously saving up my big power missiles for uh, those huge guns, for example, um, that I'm trying to destroy. And that's doing a pretty good job of knocking them down. But I make sure I aim those directly at those massive purple guns, because this is the bit I've got to try and take out. Oh, God. It's getting hairy. See, this is the bit I had trouble with before. Look at all these... Apparently I only need to shoot these things once, he says, but I don't know, because they seem to still be firing. Oh, I think you're just I think I think you're just a bad shot. <laughs> yes, I think I might be. God, don't hit my craft. Get away from my craft, goddammit. Get away. Don't you even think about it. No 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 no. Am I gonna die? Is that it? Have I gotten away with it? Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh only oh. just Yeah. Oh god. Oh, thank goodness. Checkpoint reached. Although the energy is down. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure I'm going to survive it. Oh, hello. Trench run. <laughs> it's Star Wars time. Trench Yay! run. <laughs> oh, come on. It was bound to happen at some point. Well, by law, if you make a sci-fi game and it's got Whoa. flying in, yeah. you, either, you either have to do a trench run or you have to do like a snowy level. Yeah, maybe that will come up later. But mm. yeah, it, it is obligatory. It's in, the, it's in the rules. Trench run. Whoa. Yeah. I think I've gotten away with it. Oh, I even do a trench run style shot at the very end. Uh, I've done it. I've actually I've gone into the um the exhaust port. And I'm now, <laughs> I'm now flying away from the Death Star. I mean big ship. <laughs> Are you trying to say that you have access to the force? Not on a daily basis. I subscribe to it like a like an Empire magazine, so it's more of a monthly thing. Yeah, it's like a Tai. It's like Tai Chi. It's like eh, I kind of do it every once in a while. Oh, yoga. It's like oh, I do it every Wednesday, but yeah. Well, I appear to have solved that problem. Mission complete. Again, an atrocious one-star rating. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm not a proud man. This is about showing you how it works rather than scoring the mad scores. I'm having fun though. I will say that. And you can, there are clear inspirations from other things. It's a, you know, sci-fi shooter, and like we've said before, 
echoes of Galaxy on Fire and Star Fox and all that sort of thing, but I am enjoying it in its own right. And it looks cracking, look at that. You're getting lots of Game Center achievements as well. I seem to be, yes, for, for doing things slightly wrong, which is fine by me. I'll, I'll, I'll get stuff for doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. That's how I've come this far in my life. <laughs> Are you one for Game Center achievements? Do you, do you particularly care about them? I know some people no, really like them. I don't give a toss. I really don't care. And this applies for Xbox achievements and all that stuff. Oh, really? And, as well? And PSN trophies. I do not care. Couldn't mm. give a monkeys. It's just noise for me. I mean, I understand. I don't mind people who are into it. And I understand people trying to pump up their score and, you know, that for them it might mean something. It means literally nothing to me. If I get, like, you know, however many thousand, hundred thousand Xbox Live, I don't really wear it as a badge of honor. I, I, I can't think of anyone in my life who I could show that to where they'd be like, wow, that's amazing, and shake my hand, rather mm. than going, how many points of what? Why? What? What does this I mean? I think there's something quite... I think there's, there's something quite amazing about getting 1,000G or getting a platinum or something like that. You or like having... It, or having all of the game center, or like all of the game center achievements, and clearly having not cheated. Yeah, yeah. Like there is something quite dedicated about all of that, and oh, I sure. do. It's good to it's good to extend the way that you play the game. You know, mm. it, it that thing of, hey, here's this skateboarding trick, for example, in um, True Skate or Touch Grind or whatever. Uh, if you if you do it, then you will give you this achievement. You know, and there's no other reason to do it except for, oh, cool, you get that that little cool white pop up box that comes up. But I do quite, I do quite enjoy that every once in a while. It makes you kind of think about games in different ways. Oh well, yeah, like I say, I mean, I don't have any problem with people doing it. I think it's totally cool. But um, it just doesn't really mean much to me. I mean, I'll, I know what you mean. We used to cr create our own objectives back in the day, didn't we? Like, mm. if you wanted to extend the life of a game, you'd kind of just, oh god, this is tough. Sorry, I'm fighting this massive no, that's boss. Fine. I know exactly to... what you were going to say. Like. We God. came up with ideas like, okay, you've got to get through this run of Final Fantasy One with just white mages, or you've <laughs> yeah, got yeah. to, you, you, you know, you've got to get to the end without getting hit, otherwise it's my turn. Yes, and, and that's mm. what we would do, and mm. that way, you know, if we could complete it with our own personal badge of honor, and these achievements replaced it, and it is a good way to extend the life of a game and give you something else to shoot for once you've completed the full campaign or something, for example. Yeah. But um, uh, oh God, I'm so getting taken out here, but. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm not really bothered. I often like stuff with a narrative. Let me restart the checkpoint here. Um, and for me, playing back through stuff a million times just to get that extra one achievement doesn't... That's not, not, of, not of much interest. This is quite tricky, this bit. I am trying to dodge the lasers by performing these barrel rolls to get out of the way. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but that's what I'm doing. Um, maybe I can just fly the screen, fly around the screen and dodge them that way, just keep keep them away from me. Mm. I need to shoot a bit more. I'm not really doing much shooting. That seems to work as well. Okay, let me just keep dodging, because at the moment I'm... I need to make sure they don't get past my shields and take out some of my actual health. But I was told that barrel rolling is good. It is slightly trickier for me to barrel roll. I have to flick it quite hard on the iPad in order to get it to register. Absolutely. Which might be easier on the iPhone, I don't know, but ah, that's not good. I'm finding it quite... There we go, quite tricky. That's much better. Full shield and full health now, result. Fantastic. Um, so I will say, uh, if you're just joining us, we are playing Star Horizon. Uh, I'm currently looking at the chat room, uh, seeing all of your fantastic messages and questions coming up. Obviously, we've got the developer of the game in the chat at the moment, so if you want to ask us or developers some questions, then uh, then fire away. Um, the what, One of the things I think that really works about this game is its sense of scale. Yeah, I'll give you that. These are big ships that I'm flying Yeah. On. Really, really massive sort of uh, craft, and the way the camera keeps flipping around is pretty dramatic and it's quite disorienting at times which I'm sure is you know quite deliberate and it's sort of fun I never quite know where the screen's gonna take me next um, which is good but also I'm getting my ass kicked at the moment so this might prove to be a problem ah, nuts if I'm <laughs> it's like which thing do I shoot first and with what weapon oh no that's not good purple lasers is, is this on the sort of reg? Is there are there different difficulty levels? Is this regular? I've got no idea actually. I haven't checked that. Okay. It's probably on 
sucker difficulty level, and uh, I'm just failing. Hmm. That's probably what it is. Oh, ow. I've got to get this. Damn it. Didn't quite get that laser out in time. He's still taking me out. I want to get rid of him first. Just got to do this a bit more tactically. You, die. Lasers, die in your face. Lasers. There we go. Got that second laser turret out. Now I can focus on these things. Probably made a bit more work of that than was strictly necessary. My shields appear to recharge, but my health does not. So I have to suck it up and... Uh, make sure you don't let them take down your shields like I just did in order to survive yikes oh this is this is tough oh my word so some of the some of the, the questions that are coming in and actually some advice I'll give you give you the advice straight up uh, go apparently going to the hangar uh, Sir Fedora says go to the hangar Ooh, that might upgrades. be something that you need to do Good um, and one of the other questions while while you are going to the hangar is is there any sort of uh, how would you prefer that there were physical controls involved at all? Would you prefer to be using a gamepad or something like that? Um, that's always difficult to tell with this sort of thing, isn't it? Now, um, I am actually going to hang on. I'm going to buy some guns. I'm going to upgrade my lasers. Good. Buy so guns. That's always that. a good thing. <laughs> exactly, right? And I think I might improve... Can I improve my missiles or do I not have enough cash yet? Now, these are already equipped. I think that'll do for the time being. Can I... Upgrade my other placing. No, I will continue, but with these sexier, sexier lasers. Um, it's always difficult to tell with the physical control thing. A part of me would say yes, um, because having some, you know, joysticks, twin sticks is always sort of welcome. Mm. You know, there's no way around it. Um, but oh, I know, I've been I've been hibernated. I think I'm back at the beginning of this boss fight. That's okay, because I get taken back there anyway. Um, yeah, I. I'm having not too much trouble with the on-screen controls. The touchscreen controls are fine. So doing the barrel rolls a little bit tricky. I suppose it depends how much your finger sticks on the screen. I'm going to skip past this. I think I can. Ah, yes. Excellent. Here we go. Better lasers now. Now it's on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Red lasers now. Sweet. This, this so, might... But it's not just it's not just a colour effect, is it? That you. No, 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 no. Of course. You haven't I... spent all of our money, because it is our money. What? Uh, on... Well, we're a team here. I'm the co-pilot. How's that? <laughs> well, I'm sort of looking out the back going... Ooh. You're R2 in, in the <laughs> X-Wing. You're sitting at the back going... Woo, 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 woo. I am not R2. That's you, you're so R2. Right. Oh. Yikes! Okay, that made quite short work of it. I think whoever su suggested me upgrading, upgrading the lasers, good call. About a billion people. So. About a billion people. All right, good. <laughs> well, that's why I can't look at the chat room. I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to blindly exactly. carry that's, on playing. That's why I'm the co-pilot. I'm you're... getting all the information in. That's why it's our money. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Hang on. I'm going to focus on this purple laser thing because it clearly needs to go down. Yes, down it goes. This is much better. Okay, this is a much better run. We're learning as we go. This is good, as it should be. Here comes another laser. He's going to pop out his other cannon. The bugger. There we go. Oh no, there's three of them there. Get down. Come on. Come on. Trying to take out three or four at once. Arrgh. Here comes the other purple laser. You. S I'm gonna, I should. I can't tell if I can swear on this channel or not. I haven't worked it out yet. Well, I think Cluster Fudge was the closest we've ever, we've ever come. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was perfect. deliberately... Oh my god, there's three of them now! Ah, oh, good oh. god. This isn't going well at all, and I'm straight dead again. Damn! That's alright. Instant restarts are the key. I'm totally getting past this. Also, I, I nearly have enough money to upgrade my cannons. Not my cannons, my missiles. Which will be the next port of call, I think. That'll be sweet. Right. Come on, shoot this guy. Right, he's down. One down. Trying to dodge the purple laser is tricky. Mm. Missile in the face. He's down as well. Fantastic. I'm tempted, because it's slightly awkward holding this and, and playing. I'm tempted to try and use, like, put it on the table and use both hands. You see, that, I always find that when you're, when you're trying to come up with a different way of playing a game physically, that's when you know that you're not doing very well at it. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm making no bones about it. Mm. There was a time when I was playing, so I was pretty good at 2D fighters at one point on, on consoles and uh, silly things like that, but there was one time where I was just having real trouble getting this combo, and I, I, I stopped uh, using 
my thumbs and I started using my fingers, which is apparently how some of the pro players do it on a on a on a joypad. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, complete waste of about four hours of my day. It was, <laughs> really? I, I, I was awful at it. I was Trying to convert dead. and it led to nothing. Well, here's the, here's the pink one again. I've got to try and get that pink bugger taken out. Hang on. So I'm trying to. It's the barrel roll. I can't get the barrel roll to. What do you have to do? Just, swipe swipe just to swipe very sharply. And that's the thing. I'm trying to swipe sharply and it's, for whatever reason, not registering. And now I'm just going to get taken out again. No, it sucks. Right, let me try it. Let me try it on the table. I'm going to give this a go instead. I might be able to execute something better in the, in the barrel roll department. Whoa. Right, here we go. Um. Ooh. Oh, so we're getting some interesting facts about the development of the game. Okay. So it, it was created in Unity, which is a if oh, well, it's a little bit of a sort of uh, it's a little bit of a sort of like developer insight there. That's that's kind of like a super popular engine upon which many popular. games are now running. So that's yeah. mobile games becoming uh, very popular amongst the three D developments and two D ones too. And it took it took one year to create for six people. So oh wow, not bad, not yeah. bad. I should say it's a premium release as well. This isn't a free-to-play game. Mm. There's no, there aren't any um, uh, IOPs or anything like that, is it? I don't believe so. I haven't checked. I didn't even know there they, were extra lasers. So what do they I do? They don't. They don't. Well, exactly. Don't they don't seem particularly is, no. intrusive. No, it's not that kind of, not that kind of game. Which can obviously, the kind that can think and rub people the wrong way. IOPs. Some people really, really don't like them. Mm, absolutely. Which I understand. Let's see if I can get the second one out as well. Uh, here comes the problem. Here comes the purple cannon again. There's two of them now. And I have to try and stay out of their way while taking them out. And that's the problem. He's going to open up again and kill me. Missiles. All in the face. Yes, got him. I've got that second purple one out of the way. Now there's two on the top of the ship that I need to take out. Nuts. There's a pause before they start shooting. I really need to plan my barrel rolls for then, but it's... I'm still finding it quite difficult to get around them. Oh, here they are. Right, they're both up in my face now. Yikes! Die. Oh, checkpoint reached. Oh, good grief. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Brown. Made me work for that. Nice. It's good, though. Sense of accomplishment and all that. Mm. Hello, am I supposed to be dodging these? I think I am. Oh, crap. It's, it's just on that bit where the uh, Star Destroyer launches all of its cargo out of its... Uh, the back end when it's the rubbish and the Millennium Falcon drifts off with the rubbish. I am now trying to dodge rubbish. Okay, it's all good. I think there might be something to this control scheme. I think sw switching it up was a good call, just for the sake of the stream, because I can't sit back and comfortably hold it. I have to very awkwardly hunch over the table. And it, like you are doing much better, much better than I could possibly do. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Um, I'm still having fun doing it. So we, we've changed the gameplay up a little bit here. We've moved from a straight-up shooty section to a dodging section. I'm now avoiding mm. these uh, fuel just, rods or who whatever. Who just opens up the bay door like that? Oh. I know, it's well rude. But that's people's luggage. <laughs> that's what this is. I'm dodging, like, space playstations. And, someone's uh, going to someone's gonna get on the phone to customs like, yeah, um, we, we've come to Neptune and... Uh, the the rest of our clients haven't arrived. Is there? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, mm, sorry about that. We've uh, they, they're in the blackness of space. Yes. Sorry, sorry about, about that. that. Uh... Right. We've entered a little speech bit. I've been told to calm down. I'm being told about a space station, and uh, being forwarded the coordinates. So I presume we have to go off and either defend it or shoot it. Never sure which. E each option, equally valuable, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a time for each. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes don't time. get Everyone's them mixed life. up. Or do I leave Bob alone, or do I destroy the ship? Uh, we'll leave, him, leave him alone. We've been nice so far. Well, apparently, I have left him alone. Okay. So I, I've given him the benefit of the doubt and not destroyed the ship in this instance. I love the little... Yeah, go on. May come back to bite me on the arse I later. think it will. I think it will. I think this is uh, this is the sort of game where that will happen. And also mainly because it's super hard. Sure. But I really like those portraits that come up at the top of the screen. Do you? You like the little I really character like images? Because it's, it's clearly that they're either the developer's mates 
or they are the developers themselves. And I love that. You reckon? Idea. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. It's got to be, surely. Okay. So, back to talking to my little AI computer thing. Mm -hmm. Apparently something in my ship is malfunctioning. Isn't it always? And uh, I, oh, because I declined to review a status report, apparently uh, it didn't let me know. Hey, I totally asked to review the status reports, I thought. I'm confused now. Either way, I'm a little bit stuck. I've got, yeah, yeah, the, we'll rewind and find out. Uh, I'm apparently using too much air, which is bad, because I need that for living. I read that in a science book once. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's pretty. Look at that space station. I like that. Very nice. Actually, it reminds me of the floating space station that you see at the beginning of Aliens, the one that picks up Ripley's craft. The nice thing about those kind of space stations is that they look inherently anti-aerodynamic. So mm. they are space stations that these things have to be built in space because there's no way that you could get a thing like that through the atmosphere when blasting off because it would fall apart because it's completely, you know, it sucks aerodynamically speaking. So these things can only really exist floating around in space. So you can get to build these crazy looking contraptions with arms everywhere and stuff like that because of the lack of uh, friction. Mm -hmm. okay. And I like that because you get these cool, it's basically an excuse for an artist to go mental and say, right, you can sort so of design anything within reason. Top three space stations. Gotta be number one, DS9. Um Best Space Station. Uh, yeah, conceptually, I suppose. Yes, that's a good that's a good space station. I like that. I like the one um, in two thousand and one, the circular one. That's yeah, pretty 2001, cool. That's number two. And number three, the International Space Station? Or would you go with We're talking with real space stations now? Or, well you can add them <laughs> if you want. Um, uh, I don't or know. the one from Moon? I always quite like the one that yeah, well, that's not well. I suppose it's a space station a bit. Well, it's on the moon, so it's not in space. It's a moon station. Um, but I like the docking thing that the Enterprise lives in. Now you know the Star Trek: The Motion Picture, that first movie, which is like basically two hours of glory shots of the Enterprise <laughs> drifting by <laughs> yeah. with nothing yeah. happening. It's unbelievable. It's like an art film, uh, yeah. and they suddenly got a budget. And during the TV series, they had no way of. Um, affording more than like four shots of the Enterprise exterior which is why you see the same four shots again and again and again and they got a film and they got a budget and they obviously went oh this is amazing and they got Doug Trumbull in the guy who did the special effects for Silent Running and was a supervisor on 2001 hold on wait wait Silent Running or Cool Running so very different games uh, different games very different films Peter um, but Silent Running, yeah. And he uh, basically went mad. And just clearly they had all this money and they just did all these glory shots of the Enterprise. And when the Enterprise is sitting at dock, I don't know which dock it is, um, it's kind of the ship is surrounded by this kind of you know, rectangular-ish grabbing arm. And I always like that because when it pulls away from it, you kind of leaves it floating in, in deep space. And again, it looks kind of awkward and slightly insect-like. But mm. I always thought it looked brilliant. It's a kind of mm. awesome looking, awesome looking object. Absolutely. Um, we've got some, we've got some suggestions. Ooh, ow. We've got some suggestions in okay. the chat. Babylon Five, the one from Moonraker. That's a good call, Babylon Five. Yeah, that tubular one because it did that twisting thing where all the different modules on the ship see, are moving. You see, that was awesome, but the one from Moonraker was rubbish. I don't, I don't really do the Bond films. I'm not familiar well, with that one. The, I, it, like, imagine um, the rubbish Bond. Basically, going about shooting guns in space. The rubbish space one. The rubbish one. Which one? Um, Lazenby? Uh, uh, no, the other rubbish one. The one. Uh, t is it Timothy Dalton? Oh, Dalton. Is oh, poor Dal old Dalton. Is it Timothy Dalton? Or Roger Moore? Who's the Who's the one with the red hair? Roger Moore. The red hair. I don't know. You're asking me about. Yeah, Roger Moore. I yeah, do sci-fi. I don't do Bond. All right, fair enough. Um, Bond. There's also one called Dead Dead Star or Death Star or something like that. Death Possibly. Star. I don't know. That's. that's um, Death Star is in Star Wars, dear. Oh, oh God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. There's no, not a Bond movie called Death I Star. Um, no, I do know that. The name Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, sort of like... Some weird know. slash fit. Flicks a cigarette out. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, lights up a cigarette, but with a lightsaber. <laughs> like, oh, so yeah, cool. Pimp. That is Pimp. Yeah, oh, amazing. I'm not doing brilliantly here. I keep smashing into these little floating module things. Coming back round for another pass. Space Bob. Space Bob says they attacked us while it was coming. 
Oh, he's still alive though. What? We don't deal with pirates. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, I, I think consequences are happening. Consequences from one of my decisions. Okay. Um, and now we're back to shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Consequences always seem to have the same result. Like there's a consequence, and then I shoot something. I've always found I've always found that shooting does result in some form of consequence. Like. Well, yeah, but I was just talking, and then and then they started shooting. Yeah, but you can resolve pretty much anything by shooting. Han Solo, see, I do know Star Wars. He resolved <laughs> something by shooting Greedo. Yeah. Less said about that, the better, I suppose. Because mm. kids will have a very funny idea of the order in which that happened nowadays because the Blu-rays don't have the original versions on them. No, no. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, don't. See, I haven't even... I've, I've fallen completely out of love with Star Wars. Whereas, it was, as a kid, my brother was hugely into it and I loved Empire Strikes Back, particularly, you know, played on a loop in our house, so I, mm. I grew up with it and it was fantastic. Ever since the... The prequel nonsense and then the tinkering with the originals and the sheer volume of spin-off things. Not just the Clone Wars, you know, CGI cartoon series and stuff, but it's become so diluted at this point and the charm of what made the original ones fun has kind of been lost to some degree. And I, I really don't have a lot of time for it anymore. Which is a shame because I say it's the kind of thing I used to love, obviously. Are you excited about seven eight and nine? Well, in the sense that there's no way 7 can be any worse than, you know, 4, 5, and 6, or oh, 1, 2, like, 3, depending on how I, you look at it. I thought 4, 5, and 6 were alright. I thought they were okay. You've said this before, and I can never tell whether you're joking. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. I like, um, what's the one, he's um, a Gungan? He's got like a, they made you, like You are joking them. now, you are being... He's, he's quite funny. You're being facetious. No, he's Because Because there's nobody in the world who likes Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah, Jar Jar Binks, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. <sighs> Don't listen to him, viewers. He's, he's pretty fun. He was like a bumbling your... idiot. He's pretty much responsible for like all, all six films worth of troubles going down, isn't he? Because he yeah, basically yeah, yes, he allows he decides to give confidence to Chancellor Valorum in one of those election things. He suggests that everyone votes or something. I don't pretend to know because oh, those. <laughs> I got, I got actually attacked in one of my videos for making some, like, passing reference. I'm going to upgrade my ship before I do the next level. Some passing reference to the fact that the, you know, episodes 1, 2, and 3 are rubbish. And I thought that was just an accepted fact. I didn't the expect anyone internet. to be like... There will, yeah, but there will always be somebody who's just like, I will defend! I will defend these guys to the death! Yeah, but I was like, you're not seriously telling me that it's really good, are you? Because it's... Clearly not. Right, I've boosted my armor plating because I obviously need more armor because I suck. Um, and I'm going to buy Mark II missiles. More guns. Buy more guns. Not quite enough to get the next one. So, I know, I've upgraded my armor and a whole bunch of stuff. So, looking good. Ooh, and this little loading screen shows me lots of green crystals. I think, I think things are about to get interesting. Yeah, we're in the green nebula. That well-known bit of space. <laughs> it's you very, know the bit. It's very environmental. It's where Khan hides. Mm. Or something. John. Hold that thought, Mac. Chameleon, this chapter is called. Right on. So no, I'm enjoying this. This is fun. Oh. <laughs> it is good, actually. I've been really, I've really kind of like. <clears throat> even though, like, sometimes when we play these games, I'm looking at them, thinking to myself, like, oh, this looks kind of cool. Like, oh, maybe I'll go and go and play this. But this one, I'm actually looking at, going, this looks awesome. <laughs> I think it's because it's so guided. Um, what I was gonna say is, is we're, um, we've, we've been playing this for about. Wow, 50 minutes now, but if you are just joining us late, then uh, you're late. Terrible. <laughs> Where have you been? Where have Where you been? For ages. Um, we're Play playing for my own Star amusement, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we're, we're playing uh, Star Horizon on the iPad. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions at all, then chuck them into the chat room and I will relay them to James, who's playing the game quite well now that you've gone into the hangar multiple times, upgraded. <laughs> now I know that there's a thing called upgrades. Yes, mm. uh, things are looking up a little bit and my cannons have been improved, my torpedoes have been improved. Uh, it's all looking a bit better. And I've switched up my control scheme. I'm using my index fingers now. Sorry, my, my four fingers to control it. And for the sake of this, this is a little bit easier. This is a bit better for streaming purposes because you've got this weird jaunty cable yanking out the side of the, the iPad and it's a bit awkward to hold, you see. Whoa. Things are things are all going down in this green nebula. Yes. It's nice that the, the weapons look a little bit different as well. It's nice. I've got my twin blasters. 
going on instead of a single blaster. Missiles are a little bit more impressive. Wow, the single missile is now much more powerful. That's nice, I like that. So does it feel does it feel like it's a big improvement when you upgrade all of this sort of stuff? Well, I've only gone up to, up to like Mark II on everything. I'm just trying to okay. do it incrementally. Um, I've also improved the hull of my ship, so I've got a better armor. And I've killed 600 enemies! Lieutenant status. Wow. Dodge, man. Dodge. Crikey. Well, oh, I've got to go through this gap. I'm never sure if I'm actually going to clip the sides of the uh, spaceship if I steer too far in the wrong direction, because that does happen. Like in that trench run, I could quite easily have knocked into one of the sides. Oh my. But you didn't. So, Because you're so amazing. Because of the mad skill. Is that what you want from me? And yes, from everybody? yes, that's why you're here. You're here to. You're my. Uh, what do they call it? The, not pimp hype man. You're my hype man. Pimp <laughs> man. Yeah, that's a, that's a different. That's yeah. different, yeah. It's a no. very different no, thing. But you're my hype man. You're supposed to wander around and, like, I'm supposed to have a, 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 a yeah, robe. Chief. Yeah, you're awesome. And yeah. when, I, when I drop my mic, like mic dropping endings, you go scuttle sure. over and you pick it up and give it back okay. to me. Sorry, sorry, but <laughs> that's what yeah. hype men do. He, he just gets, he just gets overexcited. Shut up, R2. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I always assumed that C-3PO was like, you know, he's witters on all the time in mm. them Star Wars movies. Uh, and R2 is always like, doo -doo -doo -doo, making funny noises. I always assumed he was swearing. He was cussing out C-3PO oh, during yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. He's like, going, it's very outrageous. And then R2's like, in his little BP code, going, shut up, you bronze tit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I, he's I saying did, in my version, anyway. I think, I think we, should, uh, we should scour all of those Star Wars re releases and go to all of the director's commentaries to find some sort of nugget as to what he was saying. Maybe the actor was just like, yeah. I hope he was in the suit, because obviously it's all overdubbed in post. I hope he was in the suit going, Beep, beep, bloop, beep, <laughs> beep, and just like, yeah. you know, and Chewie's going rawr, and everyone's just, and obviously uh, Darth Vader's going, oh, the force is strong in this one, because he's from the West Country. <laughs> is he really? David Prowse, yeah, he was from the West Country. Oh, amazing. So he has, it was like sort of rural <laughs> Darth Vader, uh, which I, I would have liked to have hear, heard the dailies and heard the real original version, that would have been cool, before James Earl Jones did it. All that other kid who was a bit rubbish. I can listen to James Jones. I know, right? He's good. He's not on enough stuff. I saw. I went to. What did I do? Actually, there was, he was playing um, uh, in London in the theatre in Kevin Spacey's theatre, doing uh, Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Um, so Hold really, on, let me just quickly go and get my monocle. Hold on. <laughs> exactly. Yes, this has taken a sudden sh upward break in terms of tone. This live stream. We've moved from Star Wars to Shakespeare. But yeah, he was doing that recently. But he has got that um, badass voice. Mm. He's quite yeah. old now. So apparently they did a lot of it sitting down. The chap, there's a chap called Lando Calrissian in the Star Wars movies. I never really understood why he or Boba Fett were even in it at all. Like, but they were always like such big figures. They were people look at them and they celebrate them and they think, "Ah, oh, that's amazing!" Like, "Oh, I love Boba Fett. He's he's the best bounty hunter." I don't even remember what scenes he was in. Like, it's because you've been spent too much time watching. Episodes one, two, and three, clear. Yeah, ah, oh, they were they but he, excited his, about Jar Jar. Yeah, but his dad was in it. Django was in that. Um, yes, but that's like, you had a stupid Australian accent. Uh, uh, nonsense. Uh, uh, nonsense. Uh, what? No, whatever. Um, the developers asked us a question about okay. the game, okay. which I think is good. So, surprise himself <laughs> asks, "Do you? Uh, how do you like the music? You've been able to get a little bit of the music. I can hear it a little bit. I can't hear it that much, though. I have mm. to say, I understand that. You know, if you're watching this on the stream, you can all hear some music in the background. Uh, the way that we stream using the devices that I have, I'm obviously listening to Peter through my headphones no, sorry um, about that. and very quietly in the background I know right uh, I've got the game coming through like a TV in the distance so I can I can hear the blasting but okay. not so much the music perhaps the guys in the stream any of the uh, viewers could probably give you a slightly better answer on that one because at the yeah. moment all I hear is pew, 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 which is good and kind of what I want to hear I'll be mm. honest mm. things blowing up the yes, lasers very much explosions. so explosions as long as those things aren't me blowing up oh look at these all these are kind of badass. These are a little bit, look a little bit B star G, like those um, Cylon cruisers that, you know, the kind of half living ships that they have. Mm. It's a little bit like that. Nice shape. Bit of lens flare there. Nice. Some nice. pretty nebulas in the distance. Going for the drama. The best, the best lens flare I ever saw. Tangent warning. 
was in a, an old PC racing game called Screamer. I don't know if anybody in the chat remembers that, but it was a, it was a, it was like it was basically trying to be Ridge Racer, but on the okay. PC because it wasn't because Ridge Racer wasn't coming to the PC. Gotcha. And yeah, it was, it was called Screamer, and it had this incredible lens flare that ran on my. <laughs> Uh, that for some reason looked amazing on my 16 megabytes of RAM Pentium. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I always remember it. Whenever somebody says lens fail or whenever I see it, I instantly think of Screamer. Isn't that? And you're like, whatever, Abrams. Screamer did what? it first. Seriously, I'm just, whenever I come out of a cinema after I've been to go and see an Abrams movie, like the Star Trek movie, the recent Star Trek movie, I just came out thinking, I should go and get that on good old games. I really should go and get that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's weird how like little things little uh, little effects and little sounds and little visual cues they they just remind you of other things you know they always it's well, like um smells and stuff are meant to be like this huge part of memory yeah, that's right you get sense memory and it you know you hear a sound or you smell a smell and you're taken back to it at a different place and in your case it's lens flare <laughs> yeah it, yeah exactly yes absolutely if i was on like the psychologist's bench well, it, and there was like a, a you know, a much cash bag on. I'm going to go go to the hangar and upgrade another thing, and then I think we'll blast through what will probably be maybe the last mission mm. before uh, we put this to bed. What am I going to go for next, though? Space uh, bed. Sp space bed. Yes, space bed. If you like, I can afford quad guns. Oh, I'm I'm going with quad guns. There's no way around it. Bring it on. This is going to be good. <coughs> Excuse me. The whole lens flare thing has been popular of late because of the movies and whatnot, and it's obviously been adapted into video games as well, and was kicking mm. around. There's plenty of it in Mass Effect, actually. Go back to 2008, Mass Effect, loads of lens flare. I've been replaying it again for the third time now on yeah. PC with a bunch of mods. And yeah, lens flare all over the shop. Before that, the big uh, thing that happened in games was Bloom. Do you remember when Bloom oh, happened? Oh, yeah, Bloom was great. And you go out of a dark place into a light place, and the screen goes whoa, white and then fades down as if your eyes were adjusting to it, as if the aperture was opening I, and closing. I got really hurt by that stuff because <laughs> I, uh, I ended up I ended up playing, uh, what was I playing? I was playing some console game or something like that, and this was when like console games were doing Bloom to look all next-gen, but they weren't yeah, really yeah, next-gen. Yeah. And some people really overused it. Oh, super overused it. And I was sat in a completely dark room because I was really, really uh, fascinated by playing this game. Mm. And then, and it was like a really, really dark corridor. I was like walking through it, and then you walk out into the sunset, and the bloom was so bright that I actually managed to get like spots in my eyes because it was like two o'clock in the morning. It was dark. You scolded everywhere. your retinas. Just like, ah! Oh, look like at the textures on these asteroids. Yeah, this is nice. Rock formations are very nice. Sorry, I'm getting geeky for a moment. There. Yeah, you are, aren't you? A moment. We've been talking about Star Wars the whole time. <laughs> yeah, now is the time to get geeky. Yeah, but no, lovely so, textures. Yeah, like, it can't be said enough. It's a really, really gorgeous looking game. If you want mm. something to make your iPad sort of sing, uh, this is a good app. And Galaxy on Fire and all those space shooters that focused a lot on the visuals, they are great at apps for showing just what your tablet device or your iPhone 5S can do. Um, they are, you know, people said for a while that like one day they'll catch up to consoles and everything and they look cracking now. They really, really do. I mean, obviously not expecting them to run in the same way as they would on a, on a PS4 or on a super high-end PC, obviously, but leaps and bounds. They, those, years. The A7 processor is an impressive, impressive mm. piece of kit. It can do a lot. I mean, this is the A6 I think I'm running and it still, still looks impressive. Yeah. I've got incoming transmissions from the Rebels. Do I join the Rebels or the Federation? Well, clearly the Rebels. Yeah, clearly. So there's that sorted. So this is going to be the, the final level that you play, do you think? Apparently it's told me uh, this is the game in which you fight against the Rebels. Ah. Uh. So I appear to have turncoated. Perhaps, you know, perhaps if I followed the plot a little closer, maybe yeah. that wouldn't have been such a big surprise. Mm. This is what is called doing a Lando. Yeah, I have just done a Lando and gone, screw you guys. <laughs> I've just fought for glory and my friends. And then I shot them in the back. Yeah, oops. But and sold this space station. Oh, well, never mind. It gives me a chance to test out my quad lasers. Destroy at least 120 Federation ships. This is my dramatic change, of course, from the end. Oh, yeah, look at those lasers. Oh, nice. They're visible as well. I've got, I can, I can actually see the four cannon prongs sticking out. That's cool. That's satisfying. Do you feel like it was worth betraying all of your friends and family? I didn't. I, I yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Uh, I'd do it again. In yeah. a second. <laughs> I know you would. I know you would. Absolutely. That's why we do this in different rooms. <laughs> oh, it does look. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it's kind of fun. Mm. Yikes. Yikes. These green gem, gem things. 
asteroid starskit. Oh, hello. A massive ship. A massive ship. One of my old ships, I suppose. If I'm being honest. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I think I'm about to get seriously taken out here. This is, this is going badly. Yikes. I think they're quite cross. Yeah, I don't think they're particularly happy with those sorts of actions. I think they feel justifiably betrayed. Especially considering, like, you're behind some high-tech weaponry and you're shooting it at them as well. Like, yeah, but... Oh, they've got to take it on the chin, you know. High turnover uh, in this alliance. Mm. <laughs> easy come, <laughs> easy go, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Whoa! Whoa! Weak. So, as we're starting to kind of uh, uh, come to the end of, uh, of our stream today, like, uh, obviously we'll finish off this level if you're good enough which you know <laughs> Oi. if you've upgraded enough then uh, uh, then maybe we'll a bit, get through a bit too big for his metal boots if you ask yeah, me yeah, it's absolutely true Co I do have an ejector button in ship you know oh. yeah okay well I will uh, I'll, I'll refrain from being mean anymore <laughs> but obviously uh, it'd be great to hear what you guys in the chat room think about the game whether or not you're going to go and grab this it is out now is that right it's it's out now it's it? out it's... right now I think I'm going to say it's £2.99 $5.99 mm. $4.99 I might want to double check that um, certainly you'll get a confirmation mm. of the price I'm sure Peter can find it but also oh, yes. there is a uh, review up on App Spy at the moment you can watch the full video review which is a little bit more concise than this obviously um, and shows you more of the gameplay and uh, just gives you the proper official opinions it was written by another colleague of mine um, but he liked it as well well, with you know a few a few caveats but basically uh, enjoyed it and it's a thing where you've got to take it for what it is like mm. if you go in expecting it to be a massive uh, open-ended universe exploring you know elite type affair then you might be disappointed because it's not that game this is exactly. a corridor shooter in an arcade style which looks really pretty has loads of lasers has you shooting loads of enemies it mm. If you're going to say anything about it, you can argue that it's kind of one note. You're just pretty much doing that the whole time. Mm. But that's what you do. That's what Star Fox was. That's what these arcade shooters are all about. And Absolutely. I can't say it hasn't been fun, because it sort of has been. I've been enjoying myself. I was totally going to go and research the prices, and then Gap Rules and uh, JTB went and found out that it's £2.49, okay. uh, €3.59, and nice. uh, another set of dollars. Three dollars ninety nine. That'll be two yeah. forty nine pounds. Is yeah. three ninety nine dollars. They have weird conversions on the app store, but okay. So a little bit cheaper than than I thought it was. That's good news. Um, and obviously it's not in the sixty nine p category, but you know you can argue that it perhaps looks a little sharper and more impressive than your average sixty nine p you know two D platformer or something. You could argue graphics aren't necessarily any sign of good gameplay, but. I I wouldn't feel cheated at this point if I'd if I'd got this of 69p I would think that was quite cheap I would think that was quite a bargain so I would be I like think, oh, yeah that feels about that. that feels about right yeah and like I say as long as you go into it with the right kind of expectations don't expect it to be open well just expect a, a fun blasty blasty arcade shooter then I suspect you'll have quite a good time. Hmm. You've had quite a good time so far, haven't yeah, you? Yeah 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 I, I have to say I've enjoyed it. I've done some streams before. And, there are some games you play through where you just kind of are begging for the thing to end, you know. Yeah. There's no sense of progression, there's no sense of getting anywhere, but it's been nice to upgrade the weapons, you know, having this four-pronged cannon is cool. Mm -hmm. I'm about to get my ass kicked, I think, here. But um, that's been really satisfying, so, you know, I get a sense that I'm going somewhere with it, that I'm improving. Um, that's nice. And consistent frame rate throughout, no bugs, nothing's crashed on me yet, you know, all that stuff is, is really good news. It seems to have been a pretty solid job. I would go ahead and recommend. Mm. Right, I think that brings us to the end of this. We've hit the hour mark. That is the stream over. Thank you for watching App Spy Play Star Horizon. We'll be back again on Wednesday of next Wednesday. week. Same time, 5 p.m. in the UK, or it's 10 a.m. in the morning if you're on Pacific, or 1 p.m. in the afternoon if you're on Eastern. And we will go through the Eye on the App Store show, in which we oh, show what, you what's that? What's all that? the new releases a day before they come oh. out in the App Store. So you can see us play through all the new games, we'll tell you the, the prices, you can see them in action, you can ask questions, and you can see what you need to get when Thursday rolls around, when the App Store refreshes. And we'll also be back on Friday for another one of these extended playthroughs, and possibly some more stuff on Tuesday. Ooh. But we'll keep you informed. Check back with App Spy for all of the information. Follow us on Twitch, obviously, follow us on the channel, and check out our um, Twitter feed as well, because we always keep you warned of these things a couple of hours in advance, so you'll know when to tune in. And when we're live, thank you ever so much for watching. I've been James. That was Peter Wellington. Cheers, guys. And we will catch you 
in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Bye.